Hello, Billy Cor from Carolina Circle City, which is now back on um, regular updating now <laughs> with yet another Packard Bell video. This is the faceplate to my Legend 3550, which died almost two years ago, and I have it nailed to the wall. Thank you, that is all. Good night. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but I do have a little something interesting to show you guys. Oh, a happy 89th birthday, Bob Parker. This is a um, Packard Bell Legend 814 CD. Now, this is a Packard Bell that I've had for um, quite some time now. I got it almost a year ago. I, did, I traded my multimedia F170 to um, my good friend Joe Mascola on YouTube. And and in return, he sent me this Legend 814 CD. Um, this happened in January of 2012, so it was all, so I've had this almost a year. And I'm just now doing a video about it. <laughs> but um, this is my main Packard Bell for the moment, the one I use the most. It's um, it's the reason I like it so much. Well, take a look at the model number. Look how close it is to Legend 822 CDT. This, in fact, it's it's the same age as it. It uses the same master CD, and it uses the same hard hard drive format number as the 822. So, this is as close as I've ever gotten to my Legend 822. Um, the only two big differences are the um, obviously the case. This is a 4x4 desktop, and the 822 was a mini tower. And this one uses a a Hillary motherboard like my Legend 402 CD, which um, the 822 had a PB600 board like my Legend 1510 Supreme. But anyway, um, let's take a little tour of this computer. Got a floppy drive, of course. CD-ROM, which is obviously is not original. This is from an old gateway um, I pulled out of. And this is... Um, my um, pride and joy here that I recently added to it. It's a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. I hardly ever use it though, but it's it's there if I ever need it, and it just looks so darn cool. <laughs> and um, let's flip it around without knocking anything off my dresser. Notably, my Diet Dr Pepper. Okay, here's the back of it. Here's the, um, the sticker on the back. It was manufactured November 2nd, 1995. Roughly the same time my um, 822 was built, more, most likely. Uh, the typical Packard Bell sound modem card. You can't have a Packard Bell about this. Uh, there's the ports. Obviously a Hillary board configuration. Got a Serial, parallel printer port, keyboard and mouse, PS2, both, and VGA out. And there's the power adapter. Let's uh, pop the hood on this. Okay, here's the cover taken off of it. Now, first thing I'd like to make note of is this little um, PCI card I added in uh, Sunday, I believe. This is a, um, a PCI IDE controller which supports RAID, but on a computer like this, it isn't going to need it. The reason I got this is because eventually I'm going to see if I can put maybe a 20 gigabyte hard drive in here. And unfortunately, the, this motherboard does not support drives that are bigger than 8 gigabytes, so I needed to get a, a card for this. Right now, I only have a 6 gig in here, but this is here for when I'm ready to put a 20 gig in here. And um, here's the sound modem card. There's the processor. It's a 100 megahertz Pentium, just like my 822. In fact, spec-wise, um, this is pretty much an 822, but with a different motherboarding case. There's the um, memory. I th think it's 24 megabytes. It originally had 16, but the original owner put um, 24 in it. There's the 
hard drive, six gig, floppy. A um, there's the CD-ROM, and under that is the um, five and a quarter inch floppy power supply. And that's just about it for um, the computer itself. Um, I'm gonna pop the cover back on, and um, we'll take a look at it, boot it up. Well, here I am again. It's um, now Monday the 17th. Uh, when I shot the first part of the video, it was Wednesday the 12th, and stuff came up. Not anything bad, it's just I wound up getting busy with something, so I had to put the rest of this video off, but let's let us proceed. Here's, um, here's how I have my main Packard Bell set up. I got a, um, a 14-inch digital um, control Packard Bell monitor. These are very rare by the way. I found them at I found this particular one at Value Village for about three dollars the same day I bought the Legend 130 CD over there. And um, of course I have a, a Packard Bell fast media remote. Same same one. A um, Packard Bell mouse and no Packard Bell keyboard. I actually um, do a lot of typing on this computer so I wanted a little something with a little bit more kick so um, I put my good old IBM Model M keyboard one of my all-time favorites and that's not the, again, that's not the original CD-ROM that's a something something speed which is a lot better and a five and a quarter inch floppy drive so let's uh, turn the monitor on. Oh yeah, and I got a one, one of my Packard, not Packard, <laughs> one of my Microsoft um, Sidewinder 3D Pro joysticks over there, and not to mention the speakers. Monitor's on. Now let's turn the computer on. AMI BIOS. This is where it really differs from my 822. There's a hard drive controller card kicking in. I apologize for the refresh rate here. There's nothing I can do about it, but here's the BIOS. I have the primary IDE master disabled for obvious reasons. And, not, and, and of course it's a 100 megahertz Pentium. Starting Windows 95. Hmm, looks like I got a CD in the drive. And, um, as usual, here's good old Windows 95, and this is, and I installed this using the um, actual Packard Bell Master CD that came with the Legend 822, as well as this computer. This this computer here, the 814, and the and my old 822 apparently used the exact same Master CD and hard drive format number, and I happen to have the Master CD right here. This is um, what it looks like, and it's um, number one one seven zero five twenty. So um, software-wise, this is identical to an eight twenty two, and what would also would have come on this particular machine originally. So um, I'm going to pause for a second and get the tripod out and let's have a little bit of fun with this computer. Okay, um, I got it up on the tripod. Let's um, take a look at the software end of this machine. I got my usual um, mid-90s um, computer set up here. Um, I got a... Let's see, 
Word 95, or Office 95 actually. Let me see if I can type a little something for you guys. Oop. That's the thing about Office, I always wants to apply the same default attributes to everything. Huh. Don't ask, okay? Just don't ask. <laughs> and the computer thinks its own name is a misspelling. That's kind of sad. <laughs> Alright. And as is tradition and custom on a Packard Bell video, you gotta take a look at Packard Bell Navigator. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. No comment, especially since I um, lowered myself to taking, to taking that lesson a few weeks ago on camera. Yeah. Anyway, um, here's um, Navigator Living Room. This is exactly how it probably would have looked on my 822. Uh, software room, um, same old um, kit and caboodle. Uh, let's take a look at Art Kid Space. We don't get to look at that too much. dangerous to me. Keep your software in the bookcase. Put all your games and stuff on the shelves. The bottom drawer lets mom and dad organize the room. Yeah, like mom you and dad are going to care about how you organize your computer. To where I'm standing. Keep all your files and letters in the dresser drawers. Watch out for things flying around. Now, if you need more help, click on the right box with the mouse. Audio Have glitch fun. there. It always does that on this <laughs> program. I always love the sound these um fi this filing cabinet makes when you open it. Let's open the homework folder. No um, personal. I knew I should have put shouldn't have put my fine china in there. Let's take a look and see what's inside the friends folder. And just like my my own actual childhood. There are no friends. A little less um, dangerous sounding there. And I'll use all child, all people, everyone who's ever owned a Packard Bell in the 90s and was a kid at the time, always loved hearing this sound for some reason, as was I. That is not the toy. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> And you can just drag a little program to start into the launch pad here. Ski free, of course. Ouch! <laughs> I knew I should eat, shouldn't have eaten that last piece of cake. <laughs> Check out the info room. Uh, same old stuff. A lot of this stuff I can't even show you because I don't have the CD with me right now. But for due, but due to constraints on the battery, let's um, get the heck out of there. Okay, let's um, go to my computer and see the 
five and a quarter inch floppies air. Go to properties. Of course, it's a Packard Bell, 24 megabytes of RAM. I was right. And device manager, um, CD-ROM is an NEC CD-ROM. Uh, two floppy disk drives, obviously. A Cirrus Logic 5430/40, a um, very good one in my opinion. Not, not the best um, technologically, but if it was on my 822, which it probably was, then it's good to me. Other devices, uh, PCI card and unknown device. Those are probably the um, the PCI IDE controller I have in here. It doesn't have um, Windows 95 drivers, but no big deal. For some reason, most of not all Packard Bells I've ever owned seem to have a resource conflict with the main communications port. I will never understand why. It doesn't seem to hurt anything, but it, there's always that conflict there. And of course the Packard Bell sound card. Huh, I've never seen this before. Must must have been that service pack I installed on here. Okay, let's um do the traditional canyon test. I don't know why you guys hadn't gotten sick of it yet. <laughs> That's Canyon for you again. <laughs> all right, now um, let's dump all these folders. Now let's play a little game. This is um, there's a series of edutainment um, computer games that that I played religiously as a kid. Um, anyone remember the Gus series by um, Modern Media Ventures? Well, here's uh, my personal favorite. Gus Goes to the Kooky Carnival, my original um, disc from the 90s. And um, it's about a dog with a very, very deep and booming voice. And uh, and you have to find these. Well, you'll see. You'll see. It's designed for Windows 3.1, but just like any Windows 3.1 program, it'll run very happily on Windows 95. If that wasn't the case, then... My experience with the 822 in the 90s would have been very, very much less um, exciting. <laughs> Alright, here we go.
and please excuse me while I go um, find my power cord for this camera. There we go, um, camera is plugged into um, AC power now so I can go as, l go as long as I want. Well, at least for two, uh, for two hours and 29 minutes is what I have left on the SD card, but I doubt I'll have that much to say. <laughs> anyway, here's Gus goes to the Kooky Carnival in search of rent. I, mean, I had it on the hardest level the other day, and it, stood, and it went back to the um, to the easiest. That way, I can get through this real quick for you guys. And you'll see what what I mean about Gus's big booming voice. Click here to go to the carnival. <laughs> Now, um, here's how I put the, um, the goal of this game. Gus has these, um, three friends, who you'll see in a minute, who are hiding in each of these, um, sections of the carnival. You got the sideshow, midway, the rides, um, prop tent, and the animal lounge. And in each one, um, we'll go to the sideshow. Okay, hope you have a stellar time in the sideshow tent. I just love the sideshow, cause it's so weird. And, and you need to click on most of these items as you can, because that's probably where, because that might be where these characters are hiding. So, um, let's click on this fax machine. Fax machine Found one. is a device capable of transmitting or receiving exact copies of printed material through the telephone lines by scanning an image and then translating His it name is into wrong. digital information. Yes, wrong number. Is it just me or did he look a lot like Kid Vid from the Burger King Kids Club commercials back in the day? <laughs> And we need to find the um, the other two. Um, mm -hmm. Not there. <laughs> well, definitely not there. Not there either. There we go. Harry Houdini was the most famous magician in the world. He was best known for his escape act. No one could keep this guy locked up. <laughs> and um, more than likely the other one is um, in this mirror. Cyber time is any time. To get to cyber time, all you have to do is believe in yourself and try your very best at everything you do. I'm more comfortable with um, getting in my DeLorean and accelerating 88 miles per hour. That's a lot easier than doing that, believe me. <laughs> and we found all three in this area. Now, um, if we were to continue to play this game, which we're not, it would take too long, you would um, do the same thing in the other areas of the game. Look for those characters. And once you've gone through all the areas and find all the characters, the game is over. And you win. So, um, that's about all I can show now for time reasons. Click here if you want to leave the carnival. Alright, and here we are in Windows again. Let me take this game back out. Now let's um, go into DOS mode. What do you think about that here? Since it's um, Christmas time, let's, let's play a few um, Christmas DOS games. Starting off with my personal favorite, Sky Xmas.
shown this game a lot, haven't I? This is the nice thing about a Packard Bell installation on a Packard Bell computer. It will, um, it'll give you more than enough DOS memory with all the drivers, so you can pretty much play just about anything. Very, very convenient in my opinion. That way you're not having to run um, Mim Maker or Quim 97 all the time. because apparently you guys like to see me torture myself. Here it is, Road 3. Anyway, um, let's take a look at another one. I showed you um, Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 95 before. Let's take a look at Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 94, the first one. The 1994 edition of Holiday Hair. Joystick seems to want to pull to the right a little bit. This needs to be recalibrated. And this is, I think, with um, a lot of 90s computer games, the music makes it for me. <laughs> Surprisingly, like I said, I didn't ha have this game growing up. I didn't discover it until 2010. But nevertheless, it's a very, very enjoyable game for me. It's a good boredom killer. killer. <laughs> I started. That's weird. And 
I'm dead. So that's enough of that. Let's go back to Windows. I'll show at least one more thing. All right, we'll take a look at kid picks. This is the 1996 edition, the one I had. Rolling up. Ew, looks like blood. Oh no! Oh no indeed, yeah. <laughs> Now that really looks like blood. I know I better change the color. There we go. That's a much more happier looking uh, blue, which makes it look more like water. Just be glad I didn't go with yellow. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm drawing, to tell you the truth. <laughs> looks like an icy tree. <laughs> And of course, everyone's favorite, the delete tools. <laughs> Let's take a look at another one. Uh oh. Ooh. Wow. Remind me to never use that one again. Ugh. Uh oh. And my personal favorite. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> wonder how many. I wonder. I wonder if the developers of this game thought there would be people stupid enough to be playing this 16 years later. <laughs> but we're not stupid. We just like. We just appreciate the good old days, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and with that, I think we will um, call it a day on this. But I have one more little treat for you. And I'm going to have to take the camera off the tripod. I will be back in a minute. A few months ago, a good friend of mine sent me this book in the mail. It's um, Windows Gizmos. And it's from, uh, I don't have an exact date, but it's from 1993. And, it, and it's about different types of um, interesting little software that that you could install on your Windows 3.1 um, capable machine. Now, granted, the um, computer I I'm using right now is a little bit what's the word I'm looking for uh, newer than Windows 3.1. Um, I don't mean my main computer, but this computer. However, it does include some disk in here. The best in Windows shareware and freeware. You don't hear those words much anymore. Your four Windows gizmos, freeware, and shareware disk inside. <laughs> Hard to keep this on my lap. But um, here is the. Um, the first floppy disk right here in my hand. Windows Gizmos, disk one of four. But there's a little um, abnormality about it. It's a lot bigger than your typical floppy disk, isn't it? And a lot more floppy as well. And let's try putting it in this computer. Nope. 
Nope. Nope. Uh, no, it's not going to go in here either. But wait a minute. I have a five and a quarter inch floppy drive on here, which this happens to be five and a quarter inches. Let's try this out here. Let's go to my computer. Go to the B drive. And it's reading files off of it. Well, what do you know? <laughs> I'm not going to install these, though. These are a little bit old for this particular computer. But we can maybe start the setup program just to see what it does. And that's the setup program, but again, I'm not going to do anything with it. If this were Windows 3.1, I would, but let's go ahead and remove it. And let's call it a day on this. This is Billy Core signing off on Monday, December 17th, 2012.